Sí. Ok, let's, uh, let's pray and then we'll start. Father God, we, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. Master, we commit this uh, session into your mighty hands. Lord, we pray that you would speak to us. Lord, we thank you that our sufficiency is from you and you alone, Lord. We pray that you would enable us to, Lord, uh, understand. You will enable us to put to practice, Lord, what we are learning, Lord, so that uh, it can bring about change, transformation, Lord, the way we do things, God. And I pray that it will result in, Lord, uh, even more effectiveness uh, in the way we, Lord, uh, the way we do ministry, in the way we work things out, God. We thank you and uh, we commit ourselves into your mighty hands we give you all the praise and all the glory in jesus matchless name we pray amen amen okay um i think last class we looked at emotional intelligence and uh, today uh, we're going to look at cultural intelligence okay um we're almost uh, nearing the end of uh, our uh, sessions uh, on this course right and um, so we've been looking at emotional intelligence and uh, we looked at several uh, aspects of it right how to be self aware how to be how to regulate um, or manage uh, you know ourselves emotionally so that uh, we can be mature we can understand the emotions of others as well which is very very important in a team setting right uh, we looked at all that okay so today we're going to look at something called uh, cultural intelligence we started uh, this uh, looking at it last class um, we started by looking at uh, you know what is culture uh, we looked at the fact that it is uh, you know uh, that it's uh, ideas customs uh, behavior of a particular group or society right let me just put that again here you here look at what culture is right ideas customs social behavior so some of the ideas that people have uh, some maybe uh, customs or the ways of doing things um, and also uh, behavior of a particular group uh, particular group of people the society so uh, we need to understand or have an understanding of culture and right? have an understanding of uh, <coughs> um, uh, a better understanding of culture that will actually enable us to be effective in our communication effective in getting uh, you know working together as a team um, and uh, because uh, uh, the thing is uh, culture does um, Uh, several things right culture affects the way we do uh, do our work it, uh, it affects our uh, we don't under, we don't realize it but it affects uh, our customs it influences our customs influences our you know the way we uh, dress ourselves <coughs> excuse me uh, just give me a minute sorry so culture does all that you know even our food habits you know you know the way we clothe uh, the kind of clothes we wear and uh, and our speech and everything right uh, the culture plays a important role so you know if you look at our own class you know we see that we're all from different parts of the parts of the country right uh, so our uh, and outside the country you know like they've uh, so we we see that our culture uh is is different right if you look at the food habit different very different right uh the, look at uh, the way we address maybe there are you know a lot of similarities but there could be differences also and certain certain things certain customs certain traditions that we have uh are very very different okay the way we greet people maybe the way we greet elders the way um we treat them right uh, the way we treat people when they come into the house you know that we could have certain uh, certain things that we do uh, that we don't do right uh, and that's part of the culture and customs right like uh, you know like recently I attended a, a hindu wedding and um, this was just day before yesterday and uh, a friends uh, friend's son's wedding so he's there and 
and even there within that hindu uh, uh hindu culture it's there are so many changes so many differences the others were saying you know we don't we don't do this we or we do it a little differently and so on so culture is uh you know it's so varied it's so complex okay now for us to have an understanding of culture is important why because the workplace has become multicultural which means we have people from different cultures right it could be maybe from the same country or we could have people from a different country now uh, an understanding of culture will actually help us um overcome many challenges okay because uh, a cultural difference is not just about nationality right or belief because um when we have like a, let's say for example you know when we have multi generational you know like or multi cultural what is multi generational it means that you know uh, when we have people of varied ages right age difference then also you know the culture is different even within the same country or nation or people group uh, people of a different age range um, they are different when it comes to their culture so we have variety of culture okay so what is cultural intelligence it means uh, it's the understanding and the and the ability to adapt to new cultural settings right um let me just that new cultural setting so which means that uh, we are not rigid see uh, we are not talking about compromising on truth okay we need to understand that or we are not talking about compromising on scripture or the standards of scripture uh, we're talking about culture where it's not against the word of god certain things that we do it's it's just that it is different okay so um so understanding uh culture would help us understand certain behavior you know maybe behavior that is uh, unfamiliar to us a behavior that is uh, let me just put it here um or ambiguous you know in the sense uh, uh i think i was i was sharing once about uh, a, a group of uh, people to whom i was uh, sharing the word uh, it's church but then um the every time i looked at them in that group they they felt that it was uh it was actually disrespectful to to look at an elder you know face to face right um so you know if you look at someone who's a senior or maybe they consider as a spiritual leader uh if you look at them in the eye and uh, you know you address them or you talk to them in the eye uh, that means it's it's you're you're not respecting them okay the, the thing is to put your head down and and listen so when i was uh, sharing the word i found it very very difficult because i didn't know this i didn't understand this right but then you know i'm looking at them to 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 see if they've understood something and i'm sharing something and they are they're actually you know turning away putting their head down um so i i i found that very very disturbing i said maybe there's something wrong with me right something wrong in the way i'm saying something wrong in the way i'm you know sharing uh maybe i'm not able to connect with this uh, you know with this church you know what is wrong then i went back and i checked and i and i realized that this this was it there's nothing wrong it's just that it was different culturally it was different right so if i had known then i won't be actually expecting that kind of a response right so i would have been able to focus better maybe just focus on you know what i needed to share and share it right what i needed to speak and speak it so um so these are things that we uh, that we that comes across as a challenge you know when it comes to culture okay um 
Now, also, it 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 means that you know people do things differently. For example, you know, um, certain cultures are you know they're very very particular about punctuality. We know that to be punctual, to be on time, is is a good thing, and uh, you know we we need to be on time, right? We need to because we're honoring. Uh, uh, it's a it's a truthful thing to do, right? It's uh, you are when you say you are on time, and you want to be there at a you know when you say that okay I'll be there, this is the time it starts, and you're there early. That means you're honoring your commitment, like to be there, and you're respecting the person. All that is fine. Right? Whereas certain cultures, when you when you say okay um, uh, you will be there at a particular time, you know, or when they say that. Um, uh, uh, just a minute, please. Um, 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 yeah. So in certain cultures, when when you uh, when when you say that okay, um, you you give that particular time, or they uh, 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 particular uh, they give a particular time. That doesn't mean that you need to be at that time. Okay. Let's say. Uh, you know, let's say Germany, a country like Germany, and then they give a particular time and say they give an appointment and say, okay, you be there at four o'clock, four p.m., which means that that four p.m. is four p.m. You know, you can't go even if you go five minutes late. That means that you know you are you are disrespecting. Uh, you know, so they have a culture of timeliness and punctuality, right? Even if it's five minutes late, it's 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 showing a lot of disrespect right whereas certain other nations uh, or group of people where it is not uh, it's not so uh, it's not so great you know as long as uh, uh, as long as uh, you know if you are there round about um, you know, around that time, or you maybe even if you around late, you come late. It, it's it's okay. You know, like uh, what we read is that okay. In a in a in a country like let's say Brazil, South American country, or even Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia right? A person of uh, in in Brazil, a person who's very important and successful and wealthy. It's it's you know that such people will will arrive late, will come late. And it's considered okay, right? When you when you come late, um, a person who and people believe that okay, if a person with status and prestige um, is uh, is cons is coming late, then that's uh, you know that's fine. The crowd also accepts that as okay, you know, and and shows that person greater greater respect. Whereas the same person, you know, if if the person arrives ten minutes late or you know, 15 minutes late, then that person is being rude, considered being rude and disrespectful. And, uh, you know, that's that's how it is. So you see, you know, culturally, you know, all these things are there, right? So for us to have an understanding of the culture or to have cultural intelligence, we will be able to address these problems, okay? And understand, okay, this is how, this is cultural. It's not that the person wants to, you know, wantedly disrespectful, you know, be disrespectful, disrespectful of office timings, or you know, deadlines, project deadlines, etc. But it's something that is cultural. But we need to address that, right? So it's not that the person is bad, but it's just that the culture. It's a cultural influence. So therefore, talk about that and say, okay, you know, here when we say, you know, this particular time, we mean this particular time. So it's, uh, you know, this is the culture here. So you need to make that change. You need to make that, you know. So um, so that's uh, that's something that we need to understand. Okay. So um, we, we what, what we call as cultural intelligence or cultural quotient is uh, something that's important for us. Okay. And this will also, you know, uh, affect uh, or influence the way people are, you know, time is just one aspect of it. There are other aspects also which we look at it. Okay, some of the advantages of knowing these things well in advance. Okay, so you understand it. Okay. Um, 
there are certain several components of it you know someone who has done a like the harvard business review has done a study on uh, on this cultural quotient and you know they talk about three components or three elements okay one is um the head okay simplified as uh, okay um, let me just put it here okay the head component meaning it's the knowledge and understanding that you need good cultural quotient okay so first of all to have that knowledge and understanding that i need to know culturally uh, i need to know people what their culture is so that's the head component um so we but you know some of the things people will tell you up front okay right culturally this is how it is you know, this is what we do as a culture this is what we eat as a culture this is how we do it now we leave our footwear out uh, you know out of the uh, house of the person this is a culture this is what we do okay so some people might say up front but some most people do not say that okay so we need to understand culture as we do a little research maybe observe things uh, observe certain things that they do and then we need to be able to find out so so this is a head component that we that we um, uh, understand that yes i need to gather some information about this culture i need to be uh, you know uh, i need to have this ability to use these kind of ways to collect this information uh, in order to make my decisions okay and to be to communicate etc okay so um so that's uh, that's the you know the one element is the head the body okay so that's the second part of it what does that mean it means okay i've got this cultural information that this person or this group from this particular nation or uh, you know this kind of a background they this is how what their culture is so the second one the head and the body means to you know second component is to translate that okay so which means uh, you know i have this information so how do i use that information into action okay so maybe it's something to do with the greeting okay now how do i use that uh in my in my communication in my gesture in my body language everything everything to culturally you know make sense for this person okay so that's the second one so first was the head second is the body the third one is um is called the heart and these are these are just things for us to know um okay the simple thing is that we collect information cult- about the culture and then we use that information okay but uh, just some things for us to know okay um to have a high cultural intelligence or cultural quotient uh we need to be uh, not afraid to make mistakes and confident enough to keep improving in order to tackle these cultural cultural uh, challenges okay, so that's the heart so we talk about three components when it comes to cultural intelligence head body and heart but simply put it means that you are aware you keep keep your eyes open you uh, observe you collect information about a particular culture and and then you uh, use that information right see now uh, when we look at outreach or reaching people uh many times we do that assuming that uh our methods everything we we assume that it's it's uh you know culturally it'll be okay right but then it is not okay and when we when we look at a diff- person with a different world view okay um like they may not be uh, comfortable with you let's say shaking hands with them right or they may not be comfortable shaking hands you as a you know as a as a man or a woman shaking hands with a person of a opposite gender right they may not be comfortable with you shaking hands uh maybe you know it's like a islamic nation people who are grown up in that culture and you know you are and uh, you know you are reaching to that group 
of people, then definitely, you know, you should be mindful of the culture, right? So we we cannot say okay, it's it's fine, and uh, and just put your hand out and say okay, you can shake hands. No, it's not, right? Um, so things like that. These are minor things. So we 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 find out information. Now here are things. These are things that people will normally spell out and say okay, you don't do this, you do this. You know, you dress in this way, and you don't dress in this way. So people will normally say that out. But there are certain things which are not said. Which are unaddressed, which you will get only when you, when you observe, right? Uh, these are not just mentioned out, spelt out, but you observe it. Okay, so to be aware of it means that you have a, you it places you at an advantage. So you have uh, a, a cultural uh, intelligence advantage. Okay, and that will always help you. It could help you in the team that you are uh, uh, that you are leading. You know, if person of different people of different culture are in your team, or it could also be the people that you are reaching out to. Okay, um, let's look at um, uh, four practical aspects of uh, cultural intelligence or cultural quotient. Okay, uh, first one is called the drive. Okay, um, let me just put that out. So cultural quotient, the drive, you know, it is a motivation to learn about and respond to a different culture. Okay, so people who do not care about this uh, will find it very difficult to adapt. Okay, so when you when you have a motivation, when you have a drive, okay, uh, and you're sensitive, okay, hey, this is a different, uh, this is a different group, this is a different culture. So I need to understand. Okay, when you have that drive, when you have the motivation, then you are. Uh, more uh, likely to succeed. Okay, so how do you strengthen this? You know, get to know people in different communities and social groups. Um, get to know the people uh, and have conversations with people. Um, maybe in in different settings, right? it could be a church setting. It could be a non-church setting. Um, therefore, it will it will help. Okay, uh, but the best way to do is maybe if you are able to serve. Uh, or volunteer, we just put that here. Uh, volunteer for projects um, that put you in touch with different people of different cultures right, or different teams. So it will help you to uh, understand the culture. Of course, we can always read about it. Right? So this is first thing is the drive. Okay, um, and one thing to understand is we need to we need to have confidence in order to address these things. Okay, because a really unfamiliar setting can be very, very challenging, right? Uh, especially, you know, if it's a different culture, you're not sure, okay, what you're doing is right or wrong, right? So it can be very, very unsettling. So you need to, uh, you know, you need to understand. And with the understanding comes the confidence, okay? Um, so it means, the uh, second one is knowledge, cultural knowledge. So cultural, first of all, you need you need to have the drive. Second one, uh, you have or you collect information and knowledge about the culture. It doesn't mean that you have to know every detail of the culture. Okay. It's about knowing in general what shapes people's behaviors, values, and beliefs. Okay. When you understand that, the individual rules of behavior make much more sense. Okay. Um, so that's uh, that's the second thing it's about culture. So for example, you know. This knowledge will also help us in our communication, the way we speak, in the way we greet, uh, you know, uh, and also the kind of food, right? So when you know the culture, so we know that, okay, when we uh, when we greet other in a, others in a certain way, then that that is culturally acceptable. It's it's not necessarily you know good or bad, but then in this particular culture, this is how it is. So so we can adapt to it. Okay, we can adapt to it. We can, um, especially you know, if, if we are the people who are serving them, if we are you know, reaching out to them, then we can adapt to it. You know, I I, I know of um, a person who who actually was reaching out to um, you know uh, people in UP, and uh, so he actually 
sacrifice quite a bit you know uh, I, i'm not sure if i've uh, you know shared it here but um, he uh, went to live with them and he knew that they would dress differently eat differently um you know the so he learned the language of course he trained himself for it he learned the language secondly he learned their customs and behaviors okay and he said okay i want to be with them like them and so he he changed even the way of the way he would dress you know he would normally dress up in a in a jeans and t-shirt but he was reaching a people who were very very conservative very very traditional okay so it was a typical indian way of dressing the men would wear dhotis the men would actually wear dhotis in a different way right it is not the way things would be done here at south they would wear the white dhoti but they would tie it in a different way so he also said okay i'm going to do that okay and uh, he grew a beard he, he, he changed all that he, he learned the language um, in order to reach out in order to be among the people in order to not be seen as you know different or someone from the west but to be with them and to share christ with them okay so he did that as a sacrifice okay so uh so it is possible it is a challenge but it is possible uh but you just need to decide okay if this is what it is if this is what is required then let me make that change okay some places you know if it's urban if it is a city kind of a ministry um or you you have people who come from the city and uh, who no not necessarily you know have that kind of a cultural background um then you don't have to right you don't have to really go and uh, you don't have to really make that change yourself personally but you know uh, this is what he did so it is a sacrifice but he did that in order to uh, build a bridge and reach people okay so and, and also with regard to the food right he became a complete vegetarian complete vegetarian in order to you know reach them so on okay right so uh, so that is where the whole thing of uh, strategy comes out right uh, okay so, uh, so if you are culturally aware then the, the the strategy that you use or the manner in which okay i'm just putting out that word as strategy okay i think all of us know the meaning it's uh, the method right the strategy or the method that you use in order to do whatever so um you you become culturally sensitive right? and you do that right? so for example um um the you know i i just read uh, uh, read somewhere that you know the um like for example uh, let me just uh, share that with you this one second please um um let's say if it's a i just share this okay so here are three countries and uh three uh you know three three words which are uh, next to the country and all this refers refers to grasshopper okay grasshopper so in in the us a grasshopper is an insect it's a pest right it is it is uh, you know eating the crops it's uh, it's a pest which means it has needs to be eradicated whereas in a country like china the grass grasshopper could be a pet right it could be kept in a small container it could be kept at home it's a pet and in a place like northern island northern northern uh, thailand sorry northern thailand it's it's food right it is used as, as an appetizer so you see the difference right so um it's the same thing but perceived differently in different places okay this one simple grasshopper but perceived differently in different nations right so since you know that that's how it is perceived 
So the way your strategy is, okay, it could be uh, uh, a strategy to communicate, a strategy to reach out, a strategy to maybe, you know, you're working in a uh, in an organization, you want to, you know, you want to extend a certain product or sell a certain product, sell a particular service, all that changes, right? You know that, okay, uh, this is how it is viewed. This particular insect is seen differently. So, you know, I need to, if that strategy involves this particular insect, okay, so I need to change the way I communicate that. Okay, just an example, right? Um, because it's not seen as an appetizer in the US. So uh, I cannot, you know, if I want to bring that as a food thing, I cannot communicate that as an appetizer there because it's, it doesn't work at all. So I can completely leave out that group of people. Right? So just an example to show that how, you know, our communication needs to be, our strategy needs to be different when it comes to uh, the culture of the people. So um, here are some things to, uh, you know, to be culturally sensitive, okay? Um, let me just, put, okay, first thing is, Question, you know, ask yourself this question or question your assumption, you know, why do things happen in different ways in different cultures? Why is it, right? Because there's a deep-seated, uh, you know, uh, there's a deep-seated truth or uh, deep-seated behavior. Um, there's something behind the way, way they, uh, behind the way they do things, right? If, let's say, they are, you know, putting their footwear out, um, and I'm sure, you know, in, in India, we do that, right? We keep the footwear out. Why? Right? Um, it's, it's uh, why is it, why are they doing that? You know, there is a reason, which could be, you know, because of hygiene, it could be because of you know, what, whatever, whatever. It could be several reasons. So you, you know, ask the question, right? Uh, secondly, what will help us is also, uh, Local media, entertainment, it can also give us uh, fresh insights. It can give us new insights into how uh, people behave because of culture. Okay. What is on the media? What is uh, maybe uh, you know, popular forms of entertainment? Right? It gives us uh, understanding. Um, just one minute, huh? uh, I, I uh, just excuse me for a minute. Sorry about that. Okay, so the second thing is this. Okay, the third thing is um, to keep a journal. Okay, Prince also having some issues. Okay. Okay, to keep a journal, to keep a diary of all cultural observations and, you know, um, what are the successes? What are the challenges? It will always help us to understand, you know, the culture. Um, so this is, uh, you know, especially if you're doing something multicultural, you know, or cross-cultural, it's, it's very, very important. Let's say, you know, um, I have a friend of mine who's actually, uh, you know, who's, uh, he and his wife, they, they are in Singapore. They, he's Indian and she is, um, uh, uh, she she's not from India. She's from Taiwan, but um, they uh, met in Singapore. They're based in Singapore, right? So now they um, were getting trained to go to another uh, nation, but it was a communist nation, right? And uh, uh, I, I can't really mention the name of the country uh, because it's kind of 
you know, secretive, etc. So they're getting trained to go into that nation. And uh, so learning the language, learning the, uh, you know, the culture, it's very, very important, right, for them to be able to, uh, not just because you can learn the language and you can go and communicate with people, but, uh, but it's the culture which will actually give you acceptance, right? It's knowing the culture uh, which will actually break down a lot of barriers because uh, so the, there could be a cultural barrier. Um, and unless you overcome that barrier, you cannot really, you know, communicate well. Okay. So, um, so they spent many years, they are, they are still spending, you know, some time getting trained for that cross cultural mission. Right. So you see that it's very, very important. Okay, so we looked at a few things that would help us um, to overcome those challenges uh, culturally. Um, the, the last thing is uh, how you actually, uh, you know, it's called action. So how you actually do that, you know, how you actually live out what you understood uh, as, a, as a different culture, you know. Um, so uh, if you enable, if you help, if you, if you, because of your sensitivity, if you ha sensitivity to culture, you help them, then it is so very uh, useful. It will immediately build a bridge. You know, I, I used to meet a per person from the U.S. Uh, he was here in, um, you know, Bangalore for some time, and uh, the fact is that. As a family, they had actually ministered in an, uh, an Islamic nation, and they were also, you know, uh, ministering to uh, people who are from Islam, uh, Islamic background. So they were very, very mindful of some of the words they used, uh, the language, um, the way the way they, you know, they spoke, the language, their mannerism, everything was very, very different. They had understood so much about the culture they had understood so much not just the worldview okay not just uh, what they believed in right um, uh, so they had understood so much about the people about the customs about the culture of people that they were able to even though they came from a totally different background you know they looked different uh you know, skin color, everything was different, but they were able to build bridges with the community more than, you know, people who lived here as, you know, as Indians, um, they were able to build bridges so much more because they understood the, the culture. Yes. And they were able to uh, overcome that cultural barrier. Right. So a cultural intelligence or cultural quotient is so very, very important. It's, uh, it's, um, it helps us, um, it helps us actually uh, cross over that divide. And it's a very important life skill. So we looked at two things being uh, one is emotional intelligence. And the other one is cultural uh, intelligence okay now for example you know maybe some of us uh, will uh, will be asked to or maybe god is leading you or putting a burden in your heart to uh, you know to minister to a totally different culture right? it could be in the nation itself but the culture is totally different so all this would matter right to be culturally sensitive uh, to be able to engage uh, the different all this would matter right because if you look at the nation itself uh, our nation it's so diverse or so different culturally right now uh, look at a place like bangalore and you just move a few kilometers outside and you see the culture is different so it's very very complex um it's very um, so it's very challenging okay so uh especially for those of us in ministry if we are to minister cross culturally right we need to be mindful of this okay understand this and uh, and god will give us the strategies god will give us the um, you know the ability to bridge the culture right to um, to cross over 
uh, or, or whatever barrier is there because of culture to be able to, um, you know, to overcome that barrier. Okay. Any questions? Any doubts? Anything about culture? Right. Um, so I just want to ask, you know, what is it that you see, uh, let's say, the culture from where you are, right? very different from, let's say, in a place like Bangalore, what you experience? You all lived in Bangalore, right? Uh, I think most of you, except Neelam, I think. Neelam is um, in, in UP, Varnasi. But some of you have, you know, been part of Bible College. So what is it that you noticed in your place uh, maybe it's your family, it's where you come from, which is very, very different from the way things are done in Bangalore. Anything that you notice? Um, Dave, you could share, maybe Kanan, Aaron. Okay, Kiran says food and language. Of course, language definitely right? Uh, the language is so very, very, uh, it's a different language altogether. Uh, food, okay. So what kind of, uh, so you're from Kolkata, no, Kiran? Kolkata, so, so what food is uh, less spicy or more spicy there? Yeah, food is definitely one of the, the culture. Uh, okay. Food. Uh, the the dresses, uh, how people dress. Yeah. Um, obviously, language is vast, different. Mm. And um, any other customs, Dave? Customs, customs that you notice? Actually, um, even though I, I, I stayed in Bangalore, but uh, I think we couldn't. Um, uh, be with the locals to know about more of the, the culture personally mm. as I'm speaking. Okay. Um, so I'm not sure about the custom and more of the, the, the thing. The only the thing that we notice when we see go look around when we go around and that's what I'm saying. The food mm. there uh, is kind of uh, good, but it's uh, you call it uh, uh, very. Uh, spicy with uh, all the spices, different kind of spices, masalas there. Mm. Uh, our 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 food is we have masalas, but not so much of masala and a um, lot of chili. Mm. Chili is spicy, so those kind of things. And mm. and uh, and uh, South Indian food, you we, we put uh, salt in uh, curd. <laughs> And we never eat uh, uh, curd with salt. We always we have uh, sweets. We put sugar okay. with, with curd. So yeah, those kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> right. Any customs that you notice there? Right. Um, maybe greeting people or uh, any customs in the households that you notice which were very different. Um, Custom mainly. Um, um, I think it's the only the 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 language only how you greet and like you you say different different mm. language like but you you greet the elders and you greet those who are older to you like you show them respect. I think it's kind of the same thing here. In, it's in only, okay, okay, fine. So I see here. Okay, Aaron says food. Uh, yeah, it is a mixed culture. Okay, so Kiran, yeah, everyone, there's a lot of fish being consumed in West Bengal, that's for sure. Yeah. Okay, so the South Indians, very hospitable. Yeah, um, that's true. Mm. But I'm, we're just talking about, uh, you know, it's, uh, something that is different. Um, like from from other cultures, like from where you are, right? 
Oh, I see. Okay. So the women, okay, Prince is saying that uh, you should not look at your brother's wife's hair when it is uncovered. Oh, I see. Okay. So the women always cover their hair. Okay. So that's a different, that's definitely a, a big shift, right? It's a big change uh, in, in culture, right? So, so I guess, so, okay, Prince, where are you from, Prince? Um, What's the name of the place where you're from? Yeah, from from West Bengal, but a uh, uh, little uh, upside from uh, Kolkata. Okay. Yeah, what is the name of the place? The name of the village? Yeah. Or the town? It's Dakin Hulsura, but uh, my district is uh, Dakin Dinajpur. Sorry? Tell me again. Dakin Dinajpur. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, in my town, in my town is Balu's Ghat. Ah, uh, yeah, I remember that. Is, yeah, Bal. Uh, yeah. yeah, I remember you mentioning that. Balu's Ghat, no, okay. So, yeah, so you see, you see so much of a difference even within the state. And so if we were to, let's say, have a meeting there, or, you know, have some kind of a thing and we want to interact with people, then we should be mindful of this, right, Prince? So let's say if if women are coming there to minister and sing and all that, so it's it's best that they cover their hair. Is that is that correct? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you you know so these are things that uh, so it's being sensitive to what is the um, you know prevailing culture there. So it's not you know scripturally you know we're not doing anything scripturally uh, wrong. Uh, we just need to be uh, respectful of that culture and then do that right see here in church uh, here in a city right, we uh, some churches of course uh, people actually you know remove their shoes and and go in or remove their footwear and walk in and um, whereas some churches do not you know it's 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 fine you just wear the footwear and go so um, so if you are in a place where that is the culture so it's better to you know, respect that and do it as long as it doesn't conflict with with the truth of God's word, right? So it's there's no problem, right? So so that's the thing. So uh, so to be culturally sensitive. So this is another aspect that of uh, you know a skill that uh, we can intentionally look at. You no, know, we may not have considered it intentionally, but if we intentionally look at it, then our you know, our outreach strategy, our communication strategy, um, even when we are preaching, teaching, you know, you're ministering in that place, then, you know, you're mindful of this. And um, uh, so you, you're, even when you share the uncompromised truth, uh, you know, just to be sensitive and to make those small adjustments uh, will, will really go a long way in, uh, overcoming that cultural barriers, right? Okay, so we'll stop here, and uh, next class we will look at change. Okay, uh, how to anticipate change, how to prepare for change. Uh, so we will we will look at that, and then there is one one more chapter which is continuous learning, and with that we come to the end of this course, right? Okay, so yeah, so. We'll, um, just one second, sorry, I'll just stop the recording.